Hello, for those who don't know me, I run a group for investors and traders. I know a lot of people are skeptical of day trading, options, or even investing in stock markets in general, and I understand this completely. There is inherent risk in investing in any asset class. Even government debt is not always a guarantee, as we have been realizing over the past few years. However, there are still ways to make excellent returns without taking on massive amounts of risk. I was tired of seeing friends and family taken advantage of, having their money put into accounts or investment vehicles, paying 1% or less annually. Then I would see people putting all of their money in mutual funds, 90% of which underperform the indices after the astronomical fees that they charge. All of the financial institutions are full of less educated, less experienced salesmen pushing the products that are in their own best interest not the clients. I want to help others get the most out of their hard-earned money. I've been trading for a long time and have tried a bit of everything, from safe high-yield savings accounts, to buy and hold, to dividend investing, to options, to day trading, and I have found my niche. First of all, I no longer bother with savings accounts or low-yield fixed income because the returns just aren't worth my time and money. I still keep a large portion of my portfolio, about 80% in long-term buy-and-hold companies, mostly solid dividend payers, which brings me a constant stream of income. However, with that other 20%, that is where I make my real returns, as I day trade. I'm not some pump-and-dump penny stock investor, and although my services do provide info on the low-volume high flyers, you don't need to chase insane volatility to make great returns. Why bother with the risk? Some people are happy storing their money in a savings account, cash, or low-yield fixed asset. I'm going to show you an example without tax on investment returns. So a TFSA for Canadians or IRA for Americans. For this example, we are starting with nothing and investing $5,500 per year, increasing in $500 increments with inflation for 25 years. Earning 2%, which is basically mirroring the inflation target of the central banks, you would have $251,471.18, which is basically 80% the money you invested and 20% returns on that investment. Then remember, because of inflation, you're basically just breaking even because the things you want to buy are now going to be more expensive. Now earning 7%, which is a common long-term average return in many asset classes or equity indices, you would have $483,696.19 at the end of 25 years, all other conditions held constant. So returns are higher than the invested account by almost 15%. Even after adjusting for inflation, now you are in a constantly improving financial position. But let's say you can earn big returns, 20% per year. With that same $198,500 contributed over 25 years, you would have a total of $3,553,182.79. That makes the 2% $251,000 look pretty pathetic in comparison. In 25 years, do you want to be retired with $250,000 in your retirement account or $3.5 I expect a lot of you are thinking, where on earth are you going to get 20% annual returns long term? It's true, that is an absurdly high figure for most conservative investors. In the buy and hold portion of my portfolio, I would never expect this. I have an economics degree. I have been trading my entire adult life. I monitor the markets with almost every free waking hour. And even though markets rise over the long term, I still couldn't expect 20% per year buying and holding an entire portfolio. I've had stocks that have increased tenfold, and I've had stocks go to zero. I've had years where the market went up massively, then others where the market was down horribly. I had a nice streak where all the stocks I bought in my tax-free account were doubling within the year, so I was making 100% returns as the market was flying post-financial crisis. Then we had things like the taper tantrum, and even though I had wisely moved to gold stocks as a hedge, my returns were still low. A few riskier stocks started dropping, 
and I was no longer making the great returns I was accustomed to, no matter how good I thought I was at stock picking. So I said, I'm done with being a slave to the market. I'm staying in cash and only deploying it on the best trades I can find. I took back all control. Instead of hoping for a stock to rise 20, 30, 50, 100 percent over the year, I started looking for trades that would give me 2, 3, 5, 10 percent in one day. One day I could take a long financial stock day trade, the next I could go use put options on an energy stock to play the market short. I no longer woke up hoping futures were up and checking specific stocks with my fingers crossed. I could now wake up knowing my account would be the exact same as it was when I went to bed and I would have complete freedom to make it grow each day. Now a lot of you probably have jobs where it's difficult to trade. You can't be attached to a computer screen at all times. But that's the beauty of trading. You do it whenever you want, wherever you want. I wait for a trade I like at a price I like, take it and cash it. I recently just spent some time touring Europe and trading occasionally wherever and whenever I could find an internet connection. For at most one hour per day, and I had one of the best day trading months of my life. Take a look at my tax-free savings account, which I keep in cash and use for trading only. Notice how the indices are roughly flat and my account is growing exponentially like it should. In January, the markets were horrible and dropping hard. After a great December, I had lost on a few trades to start the new year. So I decided it was best to wait in cash a bit for things to improve. February was much better and every month since I've been making more than that low 2% return on a monthly basis instead of annually. Some days I take up to 5 different trades, some weeks I don't trade this account at all. I keep it only for the trades I am most confident in. I have other accounts for long term holdings, swings and other trades I am less confident in. But this account I keep for only my favorite ideas. In the first 8 months of the year, through August, I had 95 winning trades, 25 losers, for about 70% win percentage, which is actually pretty low for me in this account. But since I am upping the number of trades I'm doing, my percentage has gone from about 90% down to 70. I'm using this account as an example because anyone can do what I'm doing. Most of my trades are done with $10,000 position size, $20,000 being a trade I'm very confident in, and $5,000 being a riskier or lower volume stock. If you have $10,000 to invest, then you can start day trading. My biggest day trade gain was $2,612.09, and my biggest loss was $264.98, but I've only had two losses over $135 this year. So with that $10,000 position size, I target 2 to 5%, which gives profits of $200 to $500. And sometimes you get those 10% or 20% or even higher winners. But if you can average a couple hundred dollars each day, that's a decent living. I usually max out a 1% loss, which would roughly be $100. So this is pretty profitable risk-reward structure, considering my success rate and average returns. I'm buying mostly strong companies that I would not only be able to comfortably hold overnight, but for multiple years. I don't use this account for speculative penny stocks. I'm not buying pharmaceutical or biotech companies that are trading under a dollar, or nearly bankrupt companies like a lot of other day traders. I don't encourage anyone to gamble their retirement accounts like that. Here are a couple sample watch lists from last week one of which I posted free in our Facebook group pre-market as you can see from the time. You can check the performance of those stocks but here are a few of the highlights. As you can see I had a few trades where my gains were between 20 and 30 percent either same day or into the next day. Now not every day is going to necessarily be full of big gainers. Not every stock on my watch list is going to move in the expected direction. And not every stock on my watch list is going to get traded by myself that day. If there's nothing happening in markets, I try not to force trades. But constantly being fundamentally and technically ready, knowing which stocks might move and why, keeps me very well prepared to make much better than average returns. 
I have extensive watch lists, upgrades, downgrades, stock screeners, and multiple databases analyzing cert certain market or trading factors that allow me to find areas where I can consistently and confidently make money. If you want to join or just ask for more information, contact me anytime. Check out my website and you can also connect with me on any social media. Good luck with your trading.